I'm Cheryl Head, and I want to welcome you to Authors on the Air and VoucherCon 2023. It is my joy that today to be speaking with author Naomi Hirahara, who I so admire, and Naomi is going to be the VoucherCon Toastmaster this year. I've got a few questions to ask her for in a too short interview. <laughs> Naomi, let me do a quick introduction. Naomi Harahara is the Edgar Award-winning author of traditional mystery series and more short stories. Her first historical mystery, Clark and Division, won the Mary Higgins Clark Award last oh year. Currently living in her birthplace, Pasadena, California, she was an editor of the Rafi Chimpo newspaper. I, I said that wrong. Let me say it again. The Rafu Chimpo newspaper, where you were a journalist. You are a multi-talented person. I, I admire you, Naomi, and I've told you this before, so I'm not going to gush a long time because we only got 10 minutes, but I, you have been a journalist, an author. I consider you a public intellectual because I've followed your writing and reading, and I just, um, just love having the chance to spend any time with you, so thank you for being here with us today. I feel the same about you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So let's start off by asking you about your current books. Uh, you're writing, you've written a couple things in the last couple of years. Yeah, Clark and Division came out a couple years ago and it's set in Chicago in 1944, follows a Japanese American family from LA, Manzanar to finally Chicago um, during the war. And um, I've I've completed the follow-up. It's called Evergreen, and it's coming out this August. Ooh. And in, in terms of the setting, it's 1946 Los Angeles. Aha, the year after the war. That's going to be fascinating to read. I can't wait to read it. Um, you write several series, uh, including one of my favorites. Didn't you know about that? But So that must be a daunting task to shift gears in writing different protagonists in different series, different time periods. How do you do it? Well, one thing I appreciate now being an OG, because I guess I am, because I've been doing this since my first uh, Masarai mystery came out in 2004. And I think um, I just, I get bored, you know, yeah. and I, I want to push myself. And then I want to go into the heads of different characters. So mm. that's why I really, you know, and it's like an older man, a younger, mm -hmm. you know, multiracial woman. And I think actually this uh, Aki Ito, who's the protagonist of my current historical, it's my right. sweet spot because huh. I like I like writing about young people, but I love history. So yes, you know, yes. it's kind of intersection of both. Yeah, Clark and Division was just so amazing. A, a bit of a departure for you. Uh, is that was that considered? Someone said it was your first mis What is a history historical fiction mystery combo kind of thing? Most so, definitely, and yeah. Um, I think now it's it's going to impact the rest. Well, at least maybe for a decade. I plan to be writing yeah. more historical mysteries, yes. So interesting because that history is hidden. Uh, I never learned about it in school at all. So it's so wonderful to have the stories of that time from the perspective of own voices tell us about the, that period of time and give us a context for understanding where we are now. And you know, I, I admire that. Yeah. And crime fiction is perfect because it kind of gets to the heart of the matter. Yeah. Whereas people who are trying to recover from something like that, something earth shattering or watershed event, they're just thinking about moving on. Right. Mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. pushing down those um, experience, the memories of those experiences, but yes. with, a dead body, you can't ignore it. You kind of have to true. deal with it. So That's true. Do you think that uh, that wanting to kind of push aside the, the, the pain of some of our memories is a, is a generational thing? I think it's definitely, it's generational, but I think it's just human nature, right? Because mm -hmm. we're worried about our children, the next generation. Mm -hmm. We want to protect them. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times what they want is they want to know what happened. Yes, yes, which I really appreciate. So uh, let's talk about you and BoucherCon this year in San Diego. You have been named the Toastmaster, Toast Person, Toast Mistress, whatever you want to call it, for the upcoming BoucherCon. What are your thoughts and feelings about having that that honor? Uh, well, I was very intimidated by BoucherCon Minneapolis when 
you you saw Lo Lori Raider Day and just Lori, two people, two fantastic yeah, women, Lori, yeah. you know, being toast mass. I was going, I can't do that. But then <laughs> I figured, you know what? I'll I'll just do it my own way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, how how are you preparing both um, kind of psychologically <laughs> and physically for for the work you have to do? <laughs> well, the first thing I knew I had to do is I had to get threads. So Ooh. I have. I, <laughs> I had to dress for the part. It's not going to be evening gown, but very uh, <laughs> event That's great. location specific. Um, I'm do I'm planning some really fun things, so more kind of interactive. Yeah. Uh, you know, like games and to, things that. to engage the crowd. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and there'll be a little bit of history in there too. So oh, interesting. And, and, you know, this is a, it takes some energy to do this. You're on your feet, you're moving around, you have several you know, different events you have to be at. Are you, are you drinking lots of water, getting, <laughs> staying hydrated? <laughs> <laughs> well, about 10 years ago, I was running half marathons and now I'm swimming. So oh yeah, I, I think as writers, we have to take care of our bodies, right? Absolutely. That longevity. And, yeah. you know, I, I may, if there's a basketball game, I may be playing. I have um, heard there's going to be a basketball game. Okay, I'll be there then. That well, that's it, Cheryl, that's my sport, believe it or not. I did not know that. What, what's, your, what's your position? Are you a point guard? Oh, yeah. What do you think, Cheryl? I, I just do it. I mean, because you're, you're, you're strategic. <laughs> You Not don't necessarily get the height. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I was if you play that game, I'll be there and I'll put some money on your team. How about that? Yeah. Well, I'll probably be against SJ Roseanne. We we're usually, yeah, playing off of each other. So. I would love to see there. I'll be I'll be in the I'll be in the stands cheering. Um, let's talk about Bachigan in the couple minutes we have left. Uh, what do you see as the value of that conference for both crime fiction authors, but also the the fans who come? Well, any, you know, I'm friends with a, a guy who um, is really into punk music. And when I told him about these mystery conventions, he goes, oh, yeah, that's your fans. You got to be there with their fans. And, I, and it's, you know, I think other um, genres really recognize the importance yes. of not only being with our fellow writers, but also the people who read us. And of, yeah. of course, our fellow writers also read us, too. Right. So, um, so just the camaraderie, and I think especially you know during the pandemic, we were doing a lot of zooms. You know, we yeah. were connecting in little boxes. But yeah. I have to say, there's nothing like seeing people face to face. Right. Um, and just professionally, I know it's um, really been valuable for me to actually, you know, meet some of my editorial team, um, meet people who may possibly blurb me not that it's transactional but it's just like these organic friendships absolutely you know and yeah. and we love crime fiction so we all have that in common yeah it's a wonderful vibe of crime fiction of people who love crime fiction i totally agree with you on that um i want to thank you for being with us today to talk about Balchicon and to talk about your fabulous writing i'm looking forward to your new book tell me again when it will be out it'll be it's called evergreen and it'll be out in August. <laughs> well, so, just before, well, you can put the heck out of that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you, Naomi. It's so good to see you again. I look forward to seeing you in San Diego. And thank you about your kind 2023. See everyone in San Diego.